The killing of a 29-year-old South African rugby player, Lindani Mayeni, was caught on police body cameras and a 911 emergency call. He said he's Lyndon, he said South Africa. His killing by American police bemused and aggrieved South Africans. The father of two was shot four times outside a residence in Hawaii. But murkiness remains around the details of the killing. By using the released police body camera footage, the 911 call and maps, we try to understand what happened that evening when a young father was killed. The home where Lindani Mayeni was shot and killed is a six-bedroom house valued at around $3.5 million. Since 2019, there had been seven complaints about the house operating as an Airbnb and short-term rental. This is illegal in the area, but no history of violence was ever reported here. Mayeni's wife, Lindsay, said she believes Mayeni was at this house because he thought it was a Hare Krishna temple which is situated right behind the house. It's next to a temple. I don't know that he wasn't going to the temple to pray. If you Google the address, it takes you to that Airbnb next door. So if he had typed in church or temple or any place to pray, it's going to take you to that illegal Airbnb. However, there is currently no concrete evidence as to why he was at this house at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night. At five minutes past eight o'clock, a 911 emergency call comes through from a woman inside this house. Hello, what's your address? Hello. We have no time. What's please, your address? Please, please, please. Your... What's your address? It's Nike One Kalama Way. The woman, who hasn't been named, says there is a man who doesn't want to leave the house. Okay. We can hear Mayeni's voice in the background, but it is unclear what he is saying. Is he yelling at, is he yelling at you guys? Someone entered my house. Do you know who they are? He said he's Lyndon. He said South Africa. There have been allegations that Mayeni was attempting to break in or burgle the house. But if that was the case, why would a burglar take the time to introduce themselves and tell the resident where they are from? He's in the house. What is he wearing? What color is his clothes? It's a black, black t-shirt. I, I don't know whether he knows our owner or not, but he just like randomly coming and say some strange words. Okay, so what is it? Is he white? Is he black? Is he local? He's, he's black. At 10 minutes past 8 o'clock, the police arrive on the scene. According to police, the first arriving officer did not switch on his body camera, so we can't see his viewpoint. But he meets Mayeni here, on the right-hand side of the entrance to the premises. The second arriving officer enters the premises from the left-hand side of the residence. He walks up the front driveway where the woman who has made the 911 call is standing in the doorway. Okay, what car? That's you! Where he went? What? Where he went? She points the second arriving officer in the direction of Mayeni. That's me! He's in the car! The second officer pulls his gun and orders Mieni to get on the ground. But Mieni, pictured here, walks towards the second officer and attacks him. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! No! At this moment, a third officer gets out of a marked police vehicle here and runs to where the commotion is taking place. He shouts and uses his taser on Mayeni. Taser! 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 The second officer now gets back to his feet and aims his gun at Mieni. He fires one shot into Mieni. However, Mieni continues to attack the second officer, and this is when the first officer steps back from the attack and shoots Mieni three times. Police! 
he dies shortly thereafter. Let's go back earlier in the day, before Mieni was killed. What happened throughout the day that was to be Mieni's last day alive? According to Mieni's wife, Lindsay, the couple and their two children went to places of spiritual and cultural significance on the day of his death. We just kind of stopped at places that were culturally and spiritually significant. I mean, he felt like he needed protection that day and he said it throughout the day. He's actually stressed and excited for the future to come. We went up to La Ie, so it's like an hour drive, and along the way there's lots of beautiful stuff. Went up to Polynesian Culture Center, and it was closed. We're like, wow, look at this beach, it's beautiful. I've never stopped at that beach before. And just jumped in the water with my shoes on. He just came up behind me and gave me the sweetest hug. They returned home at around 7 p.m one hour before he would be killed. When then we got home, he was pacing. I think he just knew he was gonna almost like burst on death or he knew he was going to die. He starts, you know, telling me things like, like important things, but unrelevant to that time period, like just going on a tangent about colored people and why are we still calling them colored? Like nobody's saying, hey, we need to help these people. We need to give them actual foundation in life to succeed. Lindsay said Mieni was still tense and went for a drive to clear his mind. Mieni left their home at 20 minutes past 7. 30 minutes later, he answered a call from Lindsay and said he was on his way home. Maybe less than 30 minutes later, I said, oh, I just called him. He said, hey, where are you? And I said, I'm back at the home where you left me with kids. He's like, okay, I'm coming now. It sounded like he was distracted, like he was looking at something. So I, in my head, I wonder, was he actually parked outside of that house? And this is when it all started. Exactly 18 minutes after this call, he was shot and killed by police. Yeah, I still. I hopefully I'll have more birthdays, but this is this is special. Thank you. Mieni's wife is suing the Honolulu Police Department for the South African's killing. She says the police acted irresponsibly by not announcing themselves earlier. If you see an unarmed man, three of you have guns, tasers, mace, three of you, and you're afraid of one unarmed man, to me that makes that, I don't know what else to say besides cowards. However, police say their officers, who had to be hospitalized after the altercation with Mieni, acted responsibly. And when the, when the suspect approached the officer and attacked them, they were in a fight for their lives. The gun wasn't discharged until the assault was well on the way and the officer lost conscious. That's the first officer at the scene. We are still waiting for the release of the home CCTV footage, which might help in answering the big question of why the 29-year-old, who some called a gentle giant, was at 91 Kulo Way that night, and what was going through his mind when police asked him to get on the ground.